Hello, Okaboji students, um, Kira and Talon. I got an email from both of you guys asking if I would do an interview. And I figured I'd just do it all by video and make you guys type it all out. Um, so I'll answer both your questions all together and you guys can figure out how to edit it. And send me a copy of whatever you end up writing because I'm curious to see what you end up with. <clears throat> so I'll go, Kyra, Kira, I think it's Kira. I'll go through your questions first and I'll go through Talon's questions. Um, question one, what is the hardest part of your job? I think it's figuring out what to do and prioritizing. Um, it's really cool and it's actually something I think good to keep in mind as you get younger is one of the good measures of well-paying jobs or like prestigious jobs is that you don't know what you do next. <laughs> um, the higher up you get, the more ambiguous things get and you're expected to have leadership and, and decide your own thing. So the hardest part of my job is probably figuring out what to do and prioritizing what to do because there's I'm, I'm expected to drive a whole area at my team at Google. And so figuring out what to do is probably the hardest part of my job, which sounds weird. Like no one's just telling me, go do X, I do X. I have to figure that out. Second question, what career did you think you about when you were younger? I honestly thought about doing software since I was a third grader or a second grader. Like I've wanted to do this my whole life. I'm really lucky. I know I met people in college who like changed majors late in college and were kind of going through back and forth what to do. Um, and I felt really bad for them because I was lucky. I, I've, always know I know, I've always known I wouldn't work in computers. What type of special training or tools do you need for your job? Um, really just a computer <laughs> is all I really need, a decent computer. Um, you know, the fact that I have a, a computer engineering degree, bachelor's degree from Iowa State helps. Um, and I, you know, use developer tools, you know, things to edit code, things to look at source code, bug trackers. I'm in my web browser all the time for email and calendars and chat stuff. Um, and then on the programming side, there's a bunch of like programming specific tools, compilers and tools to look at source code and all that fun stuff. Where did you learn the skills you needed for your job? Um, I learned some at Iowa State as part of my bachelor's degree. Um, I taught myself how to program, you know, kind of starting pretty young in, in middle school, a little bit elementary school, I think. Um, so I learned some skills there. And then I'm, I try to kind of continuously expand my skills. So I read books. Um, I read blog posts, I watch YouTube videos, people working on stuff that's interesting. So I always try to be learning new things for my job. Question five, when and how did you figure out what career you wanted? I kind of talked about that before. I know I've always wanted to work in computer stuff. Um, I'm in a weird little thing called product management. And so that's a bit different, um, but it's all kind of thinking about software and working on software. Um, when and how did you figure out what career you wanted? <laughs> <laughs> Again, I kind of knew I wanted to work at a computer since I was a third grader, which is good. And then as I, you know, you know, kept doing things I enjoyed and, you know, I got a job working in some programming stuff in Iowa and Milford when I was in high school and I just kept like doing it. So it was been good. When did you feel the most challenged after beginning your career? How did you deal with it? Um, probably the most challenging thing was actually dealing with my EDD. Um, I have diagnosed ADHD. Um, and I didn't find out I had it until I was working at Microsoft. So I was in my 20s. Um, and that was really tough. And so getting medicated for it and, you know, getting therapy for it and figuring out even now, even with medication, I still find ways to struggle. So I'm always kind of thinking about the best way to plan my day and organize my work and not get distracted. Um, so I don't think I figured it out yet, but that's kind of how I deal with it. Um, what is the favorite part of your job? Um, I love the people I work with. I work with super smart people. I love building tools that other people use to build things, um, which is exciting. I always talk about, like, I work on developer tools. So I don't build apps. I build the tools people use to build apps. So the analogy I use is I build hammers, and I build two-by-fours, and I build construction cranes. And then other people build the buildings. And so letting other, building cool tools so that other people build cool stuff is really fun. Um, what was your favorite subject in school? I love math. I love science, kind of in high school. And then, you know, when I got to college, I liked the programming stuff. So, you know, math and science and programming. Um, what's funny is I really did not like English. I really did not like history or geography. But now that I'm out reading kind of interesting history books and stuff, I actually find really interesting. So I've kind of come around there. But I'd still say my favorite were kind of math and science. <clears throat> um, what would you change about your job if you could? I don't know if I'd change anything. Um, you know, it'd be a little bit fun to tinker more than I do. I'd like to like play with stuff more. 
Um, but the interesting thing about tinkering is oftentimes that doesn't necessarily come with any kind of big result. So my job's cool. I have lots of impact. I don't know if I change anything. And uh, number 10, where did all of your schooling take place? I make sure my audio is still working here. Um, I went to Okoboji Community School District until I was a senior in high school. And then I did four years of undergraduate at Iowa State Computer Engineering. I did one semester um, study abroad in Newcastle, um, Australia, which was super cool. And I'd recommend everyone to do a study abroad. Um, that was all, where all my formal schooling took place. And now we're getting to talents questions. What made you want to be on your career path? I think I talked about that before. I just always like computers. It's cool to be on computers. What ed education did you receive? I think I covered that. What was an education needed? This is interesting. Um, it certainly helps. I work with at least one person who didn't finish college and he does a spectacular job. He's actually helped design our programming language. So strictly speaking, not needed in my industry, but you have to be really good. And so I'd recommend like, if you have the ability to go get a degree, especially computer science, or whatever, computer engineering, do it if this is the area you're into. Um, you can learn a lot, not in school, doing computers, which is really exciting. Um, there's a lot of people who've been self-taught, um, but most people even you know here have a degree. Is it beneficial to seek opportunity rather than schooling? Um, I would say if you have a chance to go to college, go to college. Um, because you'll get a basis, especially on the theory side, that's really useful. And having like a liberal arts degree and just having access to some of that stuff, like the technical writing class I took in college was super interesting and really useful. Um, I took a bunch of women's studies classes that I thought were fascinating and super useful, just giving a broader perspective on life. Um, uh, you know, I took philosophy classes in, at university that I thought were also really compelling and trying to change how you thought about things. So, um, you know, there are famous examples like Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg and others who dropped out of college. In general, I'd say if you have an opportunity to go to school, do it. Um, what is your estimated yearly income? I'm not going to tell you, but you can look up what people make in software um, and go ahead and do that. Are software engineering companies going to be relevant in the next 10 years? I absolutely think so. I think the whole world is being eaten by software. Um, and so I think people who do software engineering and understand how to make computers work will be will be in a good space. Um, will it increase or decline? I think it'll increase. Um, the only thing I think, it, you know, it's interesting to see what machine learning and artificial intelligence and all that stuff does. Maybe no one has a job in 10 years. Who knows if the computers take over? But I think of any position to be in, being a person who could control the computers and set them up and understand how the AI works would be in a good spot. So I think it's going to increase. What could I do to set myself up to run or manage a software company in the future? I would say learn how to program is probably the first thing. You know, you, you could do that in high school. Um, I set up my own consulting company. I know people who are young, who are working college, who do software consulting on the side if they're good at a given area. So, you know, research to find things to learn that are in demand. You know, I work on Dart and Flutter, which is increasing in demand, and a lot of people are doing stuff there. But obviously, JavaScript, Python, especially the ML stuff, um, there's so many different places where there's demand. Um, you know, I got work, a job uh, doing stuff when I was in high school programming. It was my own company, but, um, you know, start there. And then um, I, the other thing I recommend is that if you want to do that, um, start it where you have low, few responsibilities. Um, starting a business is just scary. And, you know, there's lots of uncertainty with starting a business. So, you know, now that I have a mortgage and a wife and kids, the idea of like starting from scratch on my own company is a little scary. Um, so I'd say I recommend you do it while you're young because, you know, if you can crash on a friend's couch or something or stay with your parents, if that's possible, um, that's a good place to start a company. And what, in your opinion, what industries will be most profitable in the coming years? I hope renewable energy, honestly, I'm worried about the environment and stuff. So I hope lots of companies do really well doing batteries and doing electric cars and solar panels and windmills. Um, and I think software will still do a really good job in the coming years. What should I do to improve my life? Um, I would say, Think about the places and things that are most compelling to you, like the types of person you want to be in 10 years or 20 years, and then spend time talking to the people that are that and learn from them. So maybe I'm an example of that. That'd be cool. Maybe there's other people too. Um, I think it's tough to get out of a little bubble when you're in a very narrow box, especially coming from a small town in Iowa. And so any opportunity of your smart people, talk to smart people is good. And then I'd say find ways to push yourself intellectually. So whether that's reading hard books or I remember this this woman in my class, girl at the time, but she's a woman now, I'm guessing. Um, 
this is kind of a weird personal thing, but I think it's interesting. I was reading some adult magazine, more adult magazine in the library and at the high school, like Newsweek or something, like a news magazine, not nothing for teenagers, right? And I remember her asking me, she's like, why, why do you read stuff like that? Like she just was confused. She didn't understand why someone in high school, a teenager would be reading adults news magazines. And I think about how far I've gone and, and I, you know, I think I found some interesting and some good success in my life and I've traveled around the world and done cool things and had chances to work on important stuff. Um, and I think that's the answer. Like, um, don't think that you're stuck with the age you are now and what's expected from most people your age. Like you can go so far beyond that. Like, you know, Bill Gates was writing software when he was in high school um, and finding ways to sell it and do interesting things. You know, Mark Zuckerberg started a company in college. I did consulting work in college and high school, you know, and, and I had, I was doing independent consulting for my dorm in college and making really good money. Um, so like, uh, I said, the most important thing is like expand your horizons, do that by reading stuff, by talking to people, um, and then by pushing yourself, teach, like learn how to program, teach yourself, you know, and don't, don't let the fact that maybe you're not learning a lot in class or let, you know, how fast the class, I mean, I'm sure the teacher's doing a great job, but push yourself. There's no reason for you to wait. If you want to go into physics, like go teach yourself the b basics of general relativity or quantum mechanics. Like you don't need to wait for the school to teach you. Push beyond that. Um, are there any on online, online opportunities I should be doing to make money? The most important thing I would say is like, don't try to be an influencer. Um, it's people are, oh, everyone's trying to make their own TikTok thing or YouTube channel. And that's interesting. And there's lots of interesting people doing interesting work there. Um, the number of people who are successful there are so tiny. Don't get sucked into that. I would say a good opportunity is like find ways to help people solve problems they have. Um, you know, and software is a great way to do that. And I would say try to dig in there. Um, so there's 12 minutes. I'll upload this to YouTube and I hope this is useful to both of you. Um, you have my email address. So if you have any follow-ups, let me know. I hope this is useful.